All right, and welcome back to Limeade 1.0, presented by Lime City, benefiting Philo. Next run on deck is Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence. It is uh, a little bit different. It's a little bit of a boss duel, so take it away, guys. Hello, hello. I'm Apache Smash. Um, got Major with me. He's going to be running the boss duel, as Lime says. Uh, this is the first time this has ever been seen in Marathon, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Essentially, he's just going to be going through all the boss fights of the games in a special mode, which is only on the PlayStation 2 version of the game. Um, yeah, Major, Major knows it better than I do, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, everyone, I'm Major Zero, so like you said, I'm going to be doing boss duel. This is exclusive to the subsistence version of Metal Gear Solid 3. Uh, it was removed from the HD collection for reasons unknown, but presumably it was time constraints. So basically, Boss Duel is the boss fights in MGS3 reimagined. There's two modes, Normal and Special. Normal is sort of like the bosses in the main game, maybe some small changes here and there. But Special Mode really reimagines them, and, and they're totally different in some cases, and you'll see that later on in the run. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start off with Ocelot Unit, just go down the list, and time's going to start in 3, 2, 1, now. Good luck, my friend. It's a very special Ready? moment, I think, having this for the first time in Marathon. Um, as Major said, we don't get it in uh, in the uh, uh, HD collection of the game, so it doesn't really see as much running as we'd like. So Ocelot Unit is mostly the same as it would be on European Extreme. The strat is pretty much identical. Um... One second here. Aiming is pretty trash in PS2, so I have to take my sh time with these shots here. Gonna go ahead and throw a stun grenade here to get, hopefully get all these guys. You'll see Major, he oh. pokes out the door and he leans. Um, his core position uh, affects basically where the guards can see him, so if you lean, you're essentially invisible. All right, and that last shot I actually did with auto aim. There's a guard over there who's just at the perfect height, so that he uh, he gets shot with a, in the head when I just auto aim at him like that. And that is ocelot unit. Moving on to ocelot. Oh, I love the victory screen. Yeah, it's pretty good. So ocelot, he is actually substantially different than he is in the main game. The first thing you'll notice Maybe? is that at this point we have the Mosin Nagant, which you would never have at this point in the main game. And uh, we're actually going to replace the Mark 22 with the Mosin in this case, and hopefully stop him in his tracks. Very good. One shot and one to the head. Now we're going to go throw a stun grenade at him. This is going to give us a loop. And we're just going to basically keep doing that. Oops. Whiffed it. Shoot him in the head. Throw a stun at him. And... Oh. Okay, he started to run away. We'll see if we're going to get... Yep, okay. So he escaped the loop on us, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, if, if you throw a stun grenade, Ocelot has a chance to turn around when it lands. If he turns around, he doesn't re-aggro to Snake, which means it breaks the loop. And that can happen, like, in the main run as well, when you're doing the fight, uh, you know, normally. Uh, okay, so I'm actually going to reset this fight. It's actually going to be faster to go ahead and retry it than it is to try and get him with any other means. Ideally, this is only a 17-second long fight. nice when you get to see the full loop too. Um, the other thing that can happen is you, uh, when you headshot Ocelot, you can knock his hat off um, and he'll actually go and pick that up again. He won't fight you without his hat on. And that can be good for you or sometimes bad for you depending on the situation. Um, a real key with after you deal damage to him. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no worries. After, a key to the fight is, like, um, after you've thrown the stun grenade, you need to equip your weapon almost immediately um, <clears throat> during the first few frames of the, after Snake lets go of the grenade. So this is the pain. He is by far the hardest fight on PS2. Maybe? This could go any way. Um, <clears throat> it's really Phase 2 that gets challenging, because on PS2, he throws the, well, he throws the bullet bees at you. And on PS2, you can't dodge them. However, on HD Collection, if you just stay in first person... The bullet bees will never hit you. So on PS2, I'm gonna have to actually account for that and do a fairly risky strat to try and account for it. It's we'll literally it tied to the frame rate. So if you uh, use the emulator version of this game and make it run at 60 frames per second, that um, like glitch also happens. So it's literally because the HD collection runs at a higher frame rate. Yep. So I'm gonna go for score here ideally. So I'm gonna throw a stun grenade into the water and try to get as many of these fish as I can. 
Hopefully I just get lucky and get him. Uh, I got one. <clears throat> Throw a grenade. Well, he lobbed a grenade at me. So there's also a glitch here where uh, if you hold R1, it just it just stops working. It's, I don't know why it happens, but it does. So I was hoping to loop him just there. We'll see if this works. Yep, that worked. Perfect. Perfect. We can't like stress enough as well how small his head box, head hitbox is. It's very, very difficult to hit the pain in the head. Yeah, that's by far the hardest fight. He can escape the loop so easily on phase two, especially on PS2. So I'm really glad I got that first try. So the fear, this strat is actually Ready? totally different in boss duel than it would be in full game. You're never going to see anything like this in a full game run. I'm going to go for score. So I'm going to start off by shooting a bunny rabbit at my feet. I'm going to pick that up because at the end of this stage, you get points for how many food items you collect. I'm also going to collect these mushrooms. I didn't mean to change cameras there. Collect this bird, collect this frog, and collect this, hopefully, this ammo there too, as well as some guns along the way. All of these things will give me more points at the end of the level. Collect some Mark 22 ammo here. Collect some what, white phosphorus, I think, here. Uh, an AK-47, which I actually need. I'm going to use this. And finally, some stun grenades. I'm also going to use these. These are both very important. Go ahead and equip those. And uh, this is where the strat sort of gets a lot more similar to what it would be in a, a full game run. Collect some claymores here. This trap actually makes the fear run straight towards us. So he's, oh, he actually did it quickly. That's awesome. So I'm going to lob a stun grenade at him, which uh, means he doesn't get any iframes when I shoot at him. And I'm just going to go ahead and make the game lag. And in the process of that, the fear is going to die. And that's the fight. Very quick, hard to explain all that in one sitting, but basically you throw a stun grenade at him and then any lethal damage done to him uh, turns into non-lethal damage and he has no iframes. And that was actually a PB, awesome. Nice. I think that might have actually been world record because I think it was only like 75 points off the world record. Um, so moving on to the end, this fight is basically all RNG. In full game, the end always spawns in the same location at a cliffside that's gonna be basically right in front of me here when I start the fight. Uh, he can never spawn there in this in, in special mode uh, in fact he can't spawn anywhere in this room so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna run to the closest spot that he can spawn at and hope that he's there if he's not i'm just gonna run through all of his potential spawn locations and hopefully get him um he has like 32 spawn locations or something like that so i'm gonna hopefully be as quick as i can with them now something unique about the end fight in special mode is that you are actually a one-hit kill uh if he shoots you once you're you're dead and you have to restart the fight um, but thankfully, the end is also a one-hit kill for you if you get a headshot on him. So this, hopefully he's gonna be right there across the river. He wasn't, so I'm gonna move on. He can also spawn up on this cliff up here. It looks like he didn't. He can spawn up behind those boulders back there. And it looks like he didn't. Moving on. Something you can do in full game when you play casually is you can go into the map and enter the Konami code and it will show you where the end has spawned. You can't do that in, in this special mode, so if anyone's thinking of like cheese in it, you literally can't. But if you were doing a full game uh, boss, boss duel run, um, nice, nice dude. I was really lucky. Uh, so, I don't know if you noticed, but I had like one pixel of uh, health left. That's really unlikely that he'll actually not do a one-hit kill on you. Normally, 99% of the time, it is a one-hit kill. But that, uh, the Konami code does, actually doesn't work in boss duel, which is very strange, yeah. but, uh, it is a cheat code after all, so. This is the Fury. If he goes barrel side, I'm gonna try to lethal him. If he goes non-barrel side, okay, he went non-barrel side, so I'm gonna non-lethal him. And basically that consists of me spamming Mark 22 shots at him to bring his stamina down. He, I'm gonna bait him into shooting his flamethrower at me which is then going to make him try and jump away. And I'm just going to keep repeating that loop until he's dead, ideally. Yeah, obviously you don't have the modes in here, which does a lot higher damage to the Fury. So there I was a bit of a victim to auto-aim. Auto-aim in this game is very unreliable. And this fight is actually the only one in the game that really has any issues with slowdown. Uh, I am not emulating this. I'm playing it on a backwards compatible PS3. Um, so it's a bit laggy, unfortunately. There's not much I can do about that. Uh, unfortunately, he also escaped the loop, so I'm just gonna have to go ahead and hopefully I can get it somewhere else. Luckily, he didn't go to the other end of the arena, which he can do if he gets out of the loop. Looks like the this full game run. Uh, this, this, this fight can really get away from you, uh, depending on what the Fury does. We Definitely. just kind of hope for him to behave. Try to aim this one at him. 
So he also got knocked off the arena. This fight is not going very well, but uh, definitely good enough for a marathon setting. So he hasn't escaped from me yet. Totally escaped from me. Waiting for him to come back up here. Ah, okay, so he did start going north. See if I can catch him. There he is. Come on. There we go, and that ends the fight. Very nice. That fight is incredibly laggy on the PlayStation. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just because I'm playing on a backwards compatible PS3. It does lag on the HD collection uh, somewhat, but not as much as that. Yeah. So, on to Volgan. This fight is totally different than what you'll see in most full game runs. I'm actually going to non-lethal him, and uh, it's a very interesting strat. So I'm going to go ahead and run straight up to him, CQC slam him, which actually doesn't do any damage, but this roll does. And now I'm going to stand just north of him, which manipulates him into not turning around. Basically just saves an animation. And hopefully get some shots into the head. I whiffed one, which is going to have some effects. Oh, okay, I'm going to reset the fight because I, I whiffed that shot. Uh, I need uh, all those shots to hit in the beginning. Uh, it's also important that all of these shots that I'm doing on him with the Mark 22 are headshots, or else I'm going to have to do some cleanup later on in the fight. Yeah, we were actually discussing about Volgan, whether headshots or body shots mattered. Um, and we had to actually go and test it. We didn't even know until recently. Like, we just hadn't bothered to actually look. Three attempts is very rare for Volgan. These shots aren't that hard. Uh, I'm just whiffing them. <laughs> it happens. It happens. That got it. So now he's going to shoot his electricity attack at me, and I'm just going to CTC him down to the ground. One more roll into him will end this phase. And that's a pretty decent time for phase one. And now at the beginning of phase two, we're going to go ahead and first thing, equip the mask. This is actually the mask of Rykov, who is this guy's lover. So he thinks that basically I am Rykov, so it's going to stop him from doing anything for a little while, and I'm going to use this opportunity to attack. So I'm going to come behind him and basically do the same thing. Just lob some shots into his face. One more shot should... Okay, yeah, that ended the fight. So that's a uh, perfect Volgan. First time as well, that was really nice. I so, really like how they used the map to do the different victory screens. Definitely. Like, On to bike chase. I'm trying to select it, but it just won't go. You can hear me mashing the button. It won't work. I think All it's right, broken. I think it's broke. I think it's just a bug I, in the game. I'll have to skip I, it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, we're going to have to skip that Luckily, one, that one's just an auto-scroller anyway. It's three and a half minutes of doing absolutely nothing. So I'm just going to move on to Shagohod. So the Shagohod's actually a pretty interesting fight. First thing I'm going to open up with the RPG, hopefully get the loop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to time my first RPG shot uh, specifically so that it gets him um, before he attacks, but before, after he attacks, but before he moves. And that's going to stop him from doing anything. Now I can just lob some shots into the back here. Wait for his iframes to go away, and well, he escaped it. So I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna also shut up for this one. If you, Apache, you wanna go ahead and commentate it for me. Yeah, of course. Um, so we have an infinite loop for the Jagohad, essentially. Um, it can break out at um, random times. It can be very unreliable. The most important shot is the one at the beginning. We're lining up, there's like a dot in the tread, and we have to wait for a very specific time to shoot it. We're gonna say it's frame perfect, um, like all the other tricks we perform in this run. Um, and then you'll have a chance to uh, dig the back of the Shagohod twice and then again shoot the tread before it begins to turn around and Eva will just park behind it. Um, so it kind of takes the RNG out of the fight if it's performed perfectly, but it is very difficult to execute. And as I say, occasionally um, it will just break as well and there's kind of nothing we can do about that. Um, so this is looking really good so far. Um, as, we, as we say, it's going to let you damage that tread again. It can break out like this later into the fight. Um, but we managed to get like half of its health almost immediately. Um, once we're back into the normal stage of the fight, uh, we're kind of at the mercy of Eva um, driving around the Shagohod um, at like a decent pace. Sometimes again, you'll see that Major was hitting the tread, but it just wasn't it wasn't dealing the, the damage or immobilizing him. That can happen too. And um, this fight, we you know we've improved our knowledge of it massively recently but it's still somewhat of an, an enigma and uh, getting a, a perfect Shagohod in, in a run still kind of feels a little bit like RNG which is very frustrating because it's right at the end of the run as well. Um, here for some reason in boss duel it kind of spawns you in a random place to hit the Shagohod to begin with so if the Shagohod's tread is damaged Volgin will turn and look at it 
but if you damage the tread and it makes Volgan face towards you, you can't actually um, damage him because he's still looking your way. Very frustrating. Uh, Mage going with a non-lethal strategy here using the most in the gun. And he has much lower um, ammo than you would in the full game. In the full game, I think you have 10 rounds for the um, RPG. I think you started with five here. Um, so it's kind of frustrating, but that was decent. So actually, strangely, in uh, special mode, the Mosin Gaunt does the exact same amount of damage as the SVD, so it doesn't actually matter if you go for lethal or non-lethal, thankfully. Because the non-lethal kills actually get you a 10k score bonus at the end, so it's very important that we get that. So the boss, um, the loop is going to be very similar as it is in the full game run, however, she spawns in a different place. So first thing, I'm going to run north and west here, so that way she sees me from behind the tree. Go ahead and counter her CQC. And we don't get the Mosin, so we're going to have to use the Mark 22. One... Two in the head and a slam. Now, normally in the full game, we would throw a smoke grenade here, but we only have one, uh, excuse me, a stun grenade. I only have one of those in, in boss duel, so I'm just going to kick her and try to bait her into uh, CQC charging me again. Unfortunately, she didn't. So I'm See, that, that's guaranteed, and in, in full game, that CQC charge would be guaranteed after the first knockdown. So obviously, this fight runs a little bit differently because of it being a uh, boss duel. So now I'm going to use my only stun grenade. This is basically how you would do it in the full game. You would look up, throw it, and then change to your next weapon, ready to attack. The reason I throw the stun grenade here is because if I throw it any earlier, she'll break out of the loop completely and basically just run away from me like she did before. And she'll do that like three times. So it's very important that I use that stun grenade there as opposed to anywhere else. So now we got the charge. This is what it should have been after the first counter. And time's coming up here on the last hit of the boss. So one, two, and that's time. Well done, my friend. That was uh, very well executed. Some minor hiccups on a couple of the bosses, but you know, it happens. Um, I really enjoyed seeing that for the first time in, in Marathon. Yeah, I really enjoyed playing it. It's the first time this uh, boss duel has ever been shown in a marathon setting ever in the world, as far as I'm aware, and I'm very happy to have shared that with all of you. Uh, if you're interested in playing boss duel, like I said, it's exclusive to subsistence. Uh, pick it up at your local GameStop or Best Buy and have a go. Um, as always, I, I encourage you all to support Philo. It's very important to me that he gets the help that he needs. So uh, all donations, all bits, and all subscriptions go to Philo for the entirety of this event. So please do help our, our good friend, Brandon, over here. Thank you very much. And yeah, coming up next will be me running uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 European Extreme, wearing the tuxedo. Um, it's going to be an excellent run. We're going to go to a, a short intermission. Thank you.